We made a lot of progress this week preparing our winter garden for the cold. We set up the PVC hoops for our new polytunnels and built two new cold frames, which probably look familiar because they were made mostly from our old cold frames. We're expecting temps near freezing tonight, so it's great to have these projects completed. Today I thought I'd share how we build our cold frames, which are our favorite season extension tool, short of a walk-in hoop house or greenhouse. According to Elliot Coleman, cold frames create a microclimate that is one and a half zones or 500 miles to the south. This advantage allows us to grow cold hardy crops in zone 5 well into the winter. Soon I'll build a hoop house over this entire area, which will effectively move our cold frame microclimate even further south, well into zone 7 or even 8. You can often make cold frames entirely from salvaged materials. Discarded windows, glass doors, and shower doors make great tops. These tops came from a control room window of a recording studio. You can also use salvaged wood for the frames. This cold frame is typical of how we usually build them. The frame was built to match the dimensions of this repurposed refrigerator shelf. We used a wider piece of wood for the back panel than the front and cut the side panels from the depth of the back panel down to the depth of the front. We placed the cold frame cut side down, sloping south toward the sun. Please see this link if you'd like to see exactly how I made this cold frame. Unfortunately, construction of these cold frames was a little more tricky. I had to make some design changes to accommodate the large tops over a narrow garden bed. Ordinarily, both the front and back of our cold frames are at a right angle with the top of the frame. However, to make these frames fit on the garden bed, I had to make the back panel at a right angle with the bottom of the frame instead of the top. I also needed to make the slope of the cold frame much steeper to fit the large tops over the narrow garden bed. This is actually a good thing because it will allow more sun into the cold frames. Now let's take a look at how I built the side panels from two 2x12s that were cut to 42 inches to match the size of the glass top. Though the glass top is 42 inches, I want the base to be only 36 inches in order to fit on the raised bed. As a reference, I cut a strip of wood to 36 inches. Playing around with the square and the 36 inch strip of wood, I determined where to make the cuts for the bottom and back of the panel, resulting in a 36 inch bottom, a 42 inch top, and a right angle between the bottom of the panel and the back. I marked the cuts with a pencil, joined the 2x12s together with deck screws, and cut the side panel. I then used the first side panel as a template to mark the cut lines for the other side panel. Again, I joined the 2x12s together with screws and made the cuts. This gives you a better idea of what one of the side panels looks like on the bed. The cut side is down, the front slopes forward which allows more sun into the cold frame, and the back is at a right angle with the bottom. With the side panels complete, it's time to move on to the front and back panels. The front panel was easy. I started with a 46 and a half inch long 2x12 and stripped it to 10 and a half inches to match the depth of the front of the cold frame. I drilled pilot holes with a countersink drill bit in the side panels for both the front and back panels. I then attach the front panel to the side panel with deck screws. The 46 and a half inch long front panel combined with the side panels matches the 49 and a half inch glass top. I built the back panel in place with boards cut to 46 and a half inches. I started with the 2 by 12. I then added a board salvage from an old cold frame. To finish the back panel, I cut a board to match the angle of the top. I marked the angle with a pencil on both ends, drew a cut line between the two lines, adjusted my saw to match the angle, cut the board to size, and attached the board to the side panels. Now that the basic box is complete, I'll use scrap wood to reinforce the corners and cover seams between boards. I use scrap wood to reinforce all four corners, making sure to fasten the scrap wood to both panels on each corner. I also joined together the boards on the back panel with a piece of scrap wood. Finally, though it was probably overkill, I covered all the seams between boards with scrap wood. This cold frame will last several years just as it is, but it is vulnerable to rot where it comes into contact with the soil. 
So to address this problem, I'm going to use a trick I learned from Elliot Coleman. I'll cap the bottom of the cold frame with one by twos. The one by twos will protect the wood from rot and they can be replaced every several years as they decompose. I capped the bottom of the cold frame with cedar one by twos that we used as plant stakes in the past. The one by twos will keep the pine away from the soil and protect it from rot. It should last several years and can easily be replaced in the future if needed. The cold frame construction is now complete, and in a moment I'll put the lid on. But first I need to prune these tree collards, which I hope to overwinter in the cold frame. With the tree collards, we're hoping to create a zone 8 microclimate in this cold frame that will enable them to grow as perennials here in zone 5. In addition to tree collards, we'll be growing a wide variety of cold hardy crops under protection this fall and winter. Currently lettuce, Swiss chard kale, and red vein sorrel are some of the more visible plants. But if you look closely, you'll see a wide variety of self-sowing plants just getting started. In this tiny patch alone, volunteer mustard, giant red mustard, and red veined sorrel seedlings are just emerging. The wispy green leaves are Claytonia seedlings, which are a favorite cold hardy crop that will provide salad greens all winter and into the spring. With our cold frame and polytunnel construction now complete, it's time to turn my attention to building our new walk-in hoop house, which will cover this entire raised bed. I hope to finish that project within the next three or four weeks and plan to bring you along to show you my progress. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time. <music>